Hey, it's AJ here for Explained, and today we're going to be talking about using multiple computers. Is it possible to use more than one computer? And why would you need to? And would you have to use more than one keyboard and mouse? So, let's get started. So, I know what you're thinking. What a first world problem to have. Or maybe, how greedy can one person be? But believe it or not, this is actually a real problem that some people face. So as I've said, sometimes some people may just need more than one machine. But why would they need more than one machine? Well, some people have a dedicated work and personal computer, or they may have an Apple Mac OS based computer and a Windows computer. They may be a family with more than one computer, including a computer that they share. Many gamers even have a dedicated gaming machine and a second streaming machine so that they don't use too much of their gaming resources. Whatever the case, in these cases there is a real need for more than one computer. But how can you use all of these? And is it physically feasible? Well as it turns out, yes. And there is actually more than one way to be able to do it. So let's have a look at a few of these options to be able to suit these needs. So maybe you only have a single monitor. Most computer monitors will have multiple inputs. That may be HDMI, DisplayPort, USB-C, DVI, VGA, and that's just to name a few. In these cases where there is more than one input, it's simply a matter of plugging into each of those connections and using your monitor's controls to switch between them. It's also possible to get an external hardware switch to sit on your desk to allow you to switch between multiple monitor inputs. However, this is not the simplest solution to this problem and it still requires that you have more than one keyboard and mouse for each device that you're using. However, by using services such as Remote Desktop, TeamViewer, and so on, you can get around this, but we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail later. What may seem like the simplest solution to this problem is to have multiple monitors, so that one monitor is dedicated to each of the machines you need to use. But the basic version of this still requires multiple keyboards and mice. And whilst this may be preferable to some people, it's really not ideal for others, especially if you have limited desk space. Synergy is a piece of software which allows you to be able to control multiple computers across multiple monitors whilst using a single set of keyboard and mouse without having to use remote desktop solutions. This is especially useful for Windows Home users. When using Synergy, you download the software onto each computer to begin with, tell the software the monitor's position relative to the other screens you'll be using, and do the same for all of the other different computers you'll be using. And then you can seamlessly move your mouse and keyboard between all of these different environments. Synergy supports Windows, Mac, and Linux, allowing you to seamlessly move between multiple operating systems with a single keyboard and mouse. And the keyboard will follow wherever the mouse is located. There are, however, other solutions to use two computers across one or two monitors and only require one keyboard and mouse. So let's look at those. Windows Pro licenses and above include a feature called Remote Desktop that allows you to be able to connect to that computer from another computer on the same network. However, this connection will only be as stable, responsive, or as quick as the Wi-Fi or cable connection that you're using. So, if you require the more powerful resources of one computer more than another, it will be recommended to use the most powerful machine as your primary machine. To do this, you must first enable the remote desktop capabilities on the computer you wish to connect to, as well as the ability for you or any other users you require connection to that computer. You can enable this by going to Settings, System, and Remote Desktop, and turn on all of the relevant settings for you. This screen will also tell you the name of the computer you need to use to connect to it, and then in your primary computer, you can go to the Remote Desktop software, input that name of the computer you're connecting to, followed by the username and password of the account on the target computer. To be sure that you can establish the quickest and most stable connection, it would be recommended that you use a cabled connection rather than Wi-Fi for both machines. However, once you've done all this, it will allow you to be able to sign in and operate one computer from the other. You can even save a desktop shortcut to the secondary computer so allow you to be able to easily access it in the future. If you only have one monitor, it will allow you to be able to minimize and maximize the secondary computer whilst using the same keyboard and mouse at a single click, rather than having to switch between monitor inputs or input devices. However, if you use multiple monitors, this will allow you to keep the secondary computer open permanently on a second monitor, or you may even want to use the secondary computer on multiple monitors as well if you like. And you can seamlessly use a single keyboard and mouse between both computers. You can even share other peripherals, such as USB drives, 
hard drives, printers, webcams, microphones, and more between both machines. This same method can be used to be able to use Windows on a Mac OS computer, such as a MacBook, iMac, or Mac Mini. Microsoft have made a remote desktop application available via the Mac App Store, so that you can use this to be able to connect to a Windows computer. I myself use a MacBook as my primary computer, and I have a work Windows laptop and a home Windows computer. I can use the remote desktop software to easily access the Windows computer whenever I require. I can also seamlessly swipe between either a Windows or Mac OS screen, or have a combination of Windows and Mac OS screens, depending on what I'm working on. So, as I've mentioned, some people like myself may have multiple physical machines in multiple locations. So is it possible to be able to use these also? Well, yes, otherwise this video would be a lot shorter than it will be. There are a number of different ways to be able to remotely connect to these remote machines. The first of these is via a virtual private network. There are a couple of different types of VPN. So first it's best to establish the type of VPN you require. The first of these is a personal or business VPN. This is a method by being able to remotely connect to your home or business network. This will allow you to be able to see and connect to other devices on that remote network. The next is a proxy VPN. This is a way of being able to connect one or more of your devices to a secure remote server to encrypt all of your internet traffic and often use this remote server to be able to give you access to content that you may otherwise not be able to access in your home country. This however does not give you access to computers on a remote network. So to be able to accomplish connecting to a remote computer over VPN, then we need the former type as you want the ability to be able to see the computers and devices on the other side. If you connect to the remote location over VPN, this will then allow you to be able to use Microsoft Remote Desktop as we spoke about previously. But what if you don't have the ability to be able to connect over VPN? So, if you've been working with computers for any length of time, then you will have most likely have come across or heard of TeamViewer or LogMeIn before. TeamViewer is a service that allows you to be able to connect to your computer from anywhere in the world over the internet, as long as it's turned on and connected to the internet. It has a free tier with basic features for non-commercial use, meaning basically you can't use it from your personal computer to connect to your work computer, and similarly you can't use it from your work computer for business purposes. However, you can use it to connect to yours or your friends and family's computers from your personal computer, as long as it's for personal use. Other alternatives to TeamViewer include LogMeIn, Google Chrome Remote Desktop, VNC Connect, and many more. However, do consider that the connection to your remote computer will only be as good as the internet connection on both sides. Another option which you may want to look into for having a second computer is virtual machines instead of physical machines. This is a way of being able to connect to a virtual remote Windows desktop without having to physically need the hardware. However, using virtual desktops will vary depending on what you require. At the time of recording this video, Microsoft recently announced their Windows 365 platform, allowing an easy way for businesses to get started with cloud computing and we also already offer Azure virtual desktop environments to many of our customers. If you want to find out more about cloud virtual desktops, reach out to any of our consultants to be able to find out more. However, if you're not a business, there are some very useful personal consumer services available, which offer very useful interfaces to be able to see how much a virtualized cloud desktop would cost, depending on the requirements of the system. For example, you may need a system with lots of CPU cores or a high amount of RAM. They will display the monthly cost upfront to you depending on your requirements. And for many of these, you're not restricted by long agreement lengths as they provide monthly services. And they can also provide performance increases whenever you require them. Some businesses actually prefer cloud desktop virtualization or on-premise desktop virtualization as it can allow them to purchase relatively low cost user machines to use more powerful virtual environments. However, if you have a slower internet connection, you may not be able to take full advantage of virtual cloud desktops. A slower internet connection could result in the loss of quality and responsiveness of that virtual cloud desktop. On-premise virtualization is often controlled by a remote desktop server. This is a physical machine based inside of a business with the ability of allowing many users to be able to connect to it and have a desktop environment that they can use. However, the resources that can be assigned, of course, will be limited by the resources of that physical machine. Whereas cloud desktop virtualization will usually only be limited by the resources available in the data center that the service is hosted in, or the plans that they make available for their users. However, those resources could often be quite high. Okay, this one's cheating just a little bit. I know I said multiple computers, 
However, theoretically, this will give you multiple computer environments. Local desktop virtualization is the process of having a second computer environment within a single physical machine. And this can actually be achieved a couple of different ways. Dual booting is a method by which you can divide your hard drive into self-assigned percentages, and then you can load operating systems such as Windows or Linux onto them. For example, you may have a Windows computer that you can also dual boot into a Linux operating system. Or you may have an Apple computer that you dual boot into Windows or Linux. Dual booting is actually just a name, of course, as you could theoretically triple or quadruple boot if you need to be able to access multiple environments. For example, Apple's own dual boot software, Bootcamp, allows you to be able to create multiple partitions for Mac, Windows, and Linux. However, the method of dual booting requires you to restart your computer to switch between these different operating systems. And this can be a timely process, waiting to shut down and then start up your computer into a different operating system. But thankfully, there's another way, and that's software virtualization. Software virtualization allows you to be able to open up another desktop environment within the operating system that you're currently using. This could be two Windows 10s running at the same time, or Windows 10 running Linux, or even Mac running Windows or Linux. Of course, this method does mean that the virtual machine will be using the resources, or at least a share of the resources of that host machine. Many software virtualizations like this will allow you to be able to specify the amount of resources that can be used. And some of these also offer many unique features. For example, Parallels for Mac has a feature called Coherence. Coherence actually allows you to be able to launch the Windows start bar within Mac OS, and also open the software from the Windows environment directly on top of Mac OS, making the difference between these softwares nearly seamless. This can be especially useful for those Mac users who need to be able to use some software that's only made for Windows. They can use their Mac for their primary software they require, and then launch the few Windows softwares they need directly within the Mac environment. You can even pin Windows software directly onto the Mac dock for easy access. Windows software pinned into the Mac dock will show the little Parallels icon next to the software to state that it's from the Parallels environment. Parallels is also able to virtualize Linux operating systems and Android, allowing you to be able to open Android applications directly within Mac OS. We have a future video planned about how you can use Parallels with Mac OS, so keep an eye out for that one. So, using multiple computers or multiple operating systems is really actually quite easy, and there are many ways to be able to accomplish this. So, no matter what your need is, our consultants can find the best way to be able to help you accomplish this. Give them a call, and we can work with your business to be able to provide the best solution possible. Hopefully you've found this information useful. If you have, please hit the like button, and also consider sharing this video with your friends, family, and colleagues. You can also subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified about future videos such as more of our Techsplained videos and our shorter Tech Bytes videos. Until then though, see you soon.